Good morning. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday start of the work week here is upon us. May 19th, 2025, 11.03 a.m. That's California time here. Latest activity shows a 2.3 up into the Alaska area. Looks like a little bit of further movement ramping up there this morning. It's been uh, fairly active up here across this region of the subduction zone with a number of four-pointers out here. Show you guys the last week of activity and bring up the oceanic crust map so you can see that major subduction zone there called the Aleutian Trench. They've had some big earthquakes out there on it for sure. Uh, maybe looking at something building up out here uh, with all this activity in the last week or so. Number of four pointers, specifically in this region, right around the locked area of that the uh, subduction zone. So keep an eye on that. Uh, like I say, there's definitely a number of four pointers out there. No five pointers. There was a almost a five pointer, 4.9, a couple days ago. But it's been a little bit more active in this area than normal, uh, including a two pointer right now in the last hour. So keep an eye there on that subduction zone, northern end here of the um, Pacific Plate. For California, let's go ahead and check out California here real quick. Uh, well, West Coast real quick, nothing up on the Pacific Northwest side of things. Just a handful of smaller quakes. Northern California, still got some earthquake activity here uh, towards the southern end of the Cascadia. Trimmer activity has been quite amplified out there. We'll check that a little bit later on this evening when the trimmer counts come out. Um, kind of curious to see how long that uh, elevated trimmer event will uh, continue. San Francisco, quiet. Not a whole lot going on out there today in San Francisco. Some movement on the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. And uh, looks like yeah, a little bit stretching down into the uh, park field section of the San Andreas Fault here, too. Uh, this area is coming up on a uh, uh, at least a six-pointer. It's got regular occurrence intervals of about 20 to 22 years, and it's almost like clockwork. Uh, the last one was back in 2004. So, you know, that's uh, we're looking at uh, some, some time here since our last six-pointer, and that uh, should be coming up here real soon. Of course, the San Andreas Fault down south, locked and loaded. Always some fear that that six-pointer up here on the Parkfield segment could actually trigger the southern branch because of the amount of time that has passed here uh, on that segment of the plate boundary. A couple smaller quakes around Los Angeles. Really nothing of any large activity across the west coast today. Only two earthquakes above 2.5. So uh, just a typical day there across Southern California for now. Yellowstone National Park. Nothing showing up there on the map. Uh, this is the uh, latest seismograph station overview there's a handful of smaller quakes there this morning it looks like around four or five o'clock handful of uh, very small very small microquakes and of course we had some over the weekend as well kind of curious to see if the usgs picked them out uh nope they haven't covered the weekend activity yet there was definitely a, a bunch of movement kicking up here around the northwest corner of yellowstone these uh, last events there from the 16th so we'll see if they don't uh, fill in the weekend activity nothing big just all small microquake activity but it's been off and on there as far as a, a little decent earthquake swarm goes oil fields of texas still getting hit uh, a little bit out in oklahoma as well uh, the new madrid seismic zone pretty quiet in the eastern portion of the country quiet as well taking a look here at the last 24 hours and the largest magnitude goes to a 5.4 outside the uh, Easter Island area along the fracture boundary of the uh, Nazca and the Antarctica plate. It's going to be a region here right about in this area. Most of the time, well, uh, I'd say about 80% of the time when we get earthquake activity around this region, uh, it adds further strain out here on the Prue Trench. And let me see if we got anything elevated following that movement. Well, it looks like we had one earthquake here into the Perchilli Trench, 4.6. Some of this other activity from yesterday, but things may be wanting to kick back up there. Actually, it's quite active here looking on the Earthquake 3D map. Quite a bit of movement stirring up along that subduction zone. Keep an eye on that. Uh, the Atlantic's starting to stir up out here as well. Look at that five-pointer down here. 
Things may be uh, getting ready to ramp up again in terms of larger potential. Not necessarily down here, but it seems as though when we get these uh, plates really going, uh, it follows earthquake activity out here across that major rift boundary. It tends to set the plates into motion, and uh, that's when we normally see larger uh, earthquakes following activity such as what we got here today. Five-pointer, so we'll keep an eye on things. Uh, let's see here. Iceland, a little bit of movement south here of Iceland. Nothing big going on for now. A lot of older activity here from yesterday around the uh, Mediterranean region. And uh, quite active out here, though. You can follow that plate boundary quite nicely. Everywhere except for it looks like down south here around this area. May fill in. That's uh, a little quiet zone there. 5.1 up around the uh, Burma, Myanmar region. Java Trench there, fairly active as well. And of course, the typical crunching going on there around the crunch zone. That leaves uh, Taiwan area northeastward quiet for now around that Nankai Trough. Definitely watching that closely though. Some five pointers along the Kermadec Trench. And there's that activity stirring up in Alaska. I'd say we're definitely, uh, as far as the multitude of earthquakes out here today in the last 24 hours is quite amplified. Nothing big. You know, the biggest one is going to be that five-pointer uh, off the coast of of uh, Chile here. Well off the coast. But uh, we'll see how the day goes today. As far as space weather activity, we'll get to the weather here in a minute. Looks like we had a little M-flare from a far side sunspot cresting around the northeastern limb here. Just uh, barely got a glimpse of it. Let me see the magnetogram image. It's going to be this area back here, I believe. Hard to tell how complex it is. Don't really have a good shot of it right now, but we'll keep an eye on that. It did produce some uh, produce some M-flare activity late last night. Uh, nothing big, but could be a sign here that things may be starting to pick up if we get an active area around the Earth-facing side here of the sun. Overall flare threat still low at 1% for the X flare, 25% for M flare. These are all subject to change, depending how the um, how these sunspot look, how these sunspots look uh, once they come around the Earth-facing side of the sun. All right, no major roars there in the forecast for now. Quick glance at the next five close approach asteroids to the planet, and we'll see if that's going to work today. <clears throat> There's that M flare off of uh, that far side sunspot. All right, uh, let's see. What do we got today? Yeah, I don't see anything super close. This one's a little close, under a million miles. That was newly discovered 50 foot, 54 foot house size asteroid. Uh, even though that's a that's a considerable safe distance, so not anything to stress on. The rest of these, as massive as that one is, it's still way out there, over 4 million miles uh, from the planet here. All right, look at this. Moderate risk for major severe weather out there today across Oklahoma, uh, southeastern Kansas, Missouri, and Arkansas. Well, technically, if you're anywhere out here around these uh, thunderstorms, you could see some uh, severe potential today. Look at that tornado threat. Big time tornado threat today. That includes some very populated areas. Oklahoma, we're at OKC area, Tulsa. Looks like about 16 million people uh, being infect in, uh, affected. I was going to say infected. <laughs> no. Could be affected there by that uh, tornado potential today. Just a heads up. Big time wind and some hail threats in there. It's just it's one of those days, folks, where uh, you want to be on guard, be aware of your environment as far as the weather that may be forming or be heading into your area. Be on guard today, folks. Uh, tomorrow looks like that severe weather will shift a little bit further east, but I'm sure this will go into the night with that severe weather threat. So just stay weather aware. All right, far as, uh, let's see, double check the map here. Nothing new going on there. Look at the seismograph stations. Um, looks like they're all back online. Sometimes they go offline and they'll reset them and then they'll pop back up. But uh, I don't see anything of any abnormal activity. 
Just a typical day here across the uh, planet for plate movement. Like I said, though, we got uh, a few things we got to watch out here with this movement down south in the Atlantic. That tends to stress the plates down here. Not to mention this earthquake off the shore, off or off coast here, way off into the uh, Pacific Ocean here. That will probably stress this area even further, the Prue Chile Trench. So just keep an eye on things. Alaska quite active as well. Looks like that maybe those could potentially be four shocks there. Just uh, maybe a little bit too obvious here that these could very well be four shocks of something bigger happening. But we'll check back on it later. Uh, of course, if anything major happens, we'll jump back on here and uh, provide an update. Make sure you guys subscribe here. Click that like button and we will see you guys out here a little bit later on. Take care, folks, and stay safe. Keep your eye on the weather out there today.